Oh dear. So this is a thing that's going to be happening. Anyway, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Airing Dirty Laundry. We are now on chapter 2. So we've established the Mary Sue of the whole story, which is the, which was my goal for this. Uh, when, I, when I set out to do this, I wanted to create... Like, how would you create a character in a story, make it a main character, and have it blatantly be all the traits of a Mary Sue, and yet still exist within the universe without ruining it? Without, without being... Because, like, when you have a Mary Sue, there's no sort of conflict. Everything just works out. As such, this whole thing was just a challenge to myself of how would I create a Mary Sue and it just ended up like um Lapis Teeth just ended up being a sort of MacGuffin that everyone wanted she's like the holy grail except she exists as a person and everyone has access to her and this is what this what occurs and the interesting part is La Petite, just like most Mary Sue's, don't really have any real motivations or anything. As such, they, they work really well. As, uh, I think this was a ex uh, successful experiment because, um, yeah, Mary Sue's have no real motivations. They just follow the plot and everything just suddenly works out for them. So, like, there's no real situation that they don't like. But if, but because I tweaked the natural trait of a Mary Sue of being of having the, the base desires of of the author trying to be vicar live vicariously through this perfect character by twisting perceptions of what an ideal life is and what happiness is I think I achieved my goal but I don't know if, if I've achieved if that character is still a Mary Sue or just an insane character essentially she's a MacGuffin right now Someone, someone to have. But you will we'll explore that later because this time, chapter two, is all about the title, the title of the story, the very themes, themes that carry the whole story around, and the ideals that La, La Petite carries with her throughout her throughout her journey. Which isn't really complete, so after all this, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be attempting to finishing this. Uh, I'm gonna be attempting to finish this. So anyway, La Petite Morte, Saint Galt. That place was a lifetime away. Before I lived in Cantalot, I had been raised as a chevalier. Born from Cantalot nobility, I was never truly considered a pony of cheval. I mean, just imagine it. You hear names like Lance Dulac. Le Mort de Cristo in Le Fe. Names that permeate with destiny and fate and legend. And then you hear your own. A derogative idiom for living the high life. Fancy pants. But I lived there, had a childhood, and became a stallion in a way that was all too fast now that I look back. Son to the ambassador of Cantalot, I was raised strictly and instructed to forever be polite and courteous. For diplomatic reasons, I had to live without passion, and as a result, no true amount of joy. Sangolt, for its entire claim to being the heart of Cheval, to being the city of love, it was in actuality as loveless as it could get. Ponies were married away like political playthings, and then ravished like spoils of war, and then later live out empty lives as your purpose-producing heirs had passed. If anything, Sangat was a city of the most depraved of sins, where the body held as much value as purest gold. As the purest gold. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be editing this one. This one's just going to be a live reading, because I remember this chapter being rock solid. Like, I had this, I just thought of this in one day and just wrote it all down and simply transcribed it. I might have missed out a word, just which is what I tend to do when I transcribe from handwritten work. So let's see. Let's find out. This led to no ending amount of sordid affairs that no quantity of reporting and exposing could halt. It was in the culture. The voracious lust of the powerful were free to be as depraved as they wish. 
Yeah, as you can see, I was, I'm kind of referencing like a 18th or 17th century Paris. Just before the revolution. Louis the Louis seventeenth. I think that was it. I fucked that on my French history. Oh, yeah, I have a story about that. When I mentioned the... I was ref referring to the French Revolution. Yeah, I was talking to a, a Parisian. And the, her reply was, which revolution? Because apparently they had a lot of revolution, but most most people outside of um, outside of France generally just know one revolution, the French Revolution that got rid of the French monarchy from uh, the seats of power. It's an interesting story. But yes, the, this whole era is what I base it on. Uh, Seingold is highly inspired from the me watching the stories about Casanova and the era that he lived in. So, Seingold, imagine it as a Venusian court or, or the or the courts of uh, royal courts of Paris, with their with its own upper class and lower class and everything. So where was I? Sort of the fair is no quantity of reporting exposed and good halted was in the culture. Yeah, the voracious lust of the powerful were free to be as depraved as they wished because they were nobles. Like they had absolute power, they made the laws, they had all the money, they they had, they had security, the military. Like it was unthinkable for the nobles to ever expect a revolt, but they pushed, they they starved, they starved the poor and everything, and well, off with their heads. Ah, never wish upon anyone they loved, no one at all. Okay, let me just read that again. And their playthings condemned, and their playthings condemned, to, condemned the face they would never wish upon anyone they loved. No one at all. There was only one mayor. God. Yeah, it just still bothers me we, that I write, that I wrote rigging pony terminology as opposed to normal. I knew I, yeah, there's only one mayor I ever knew to be known as Lala. Born as the sole heir. Yeah, because, um, yeah. Last chapter. Fancy Pants was just outside the Celestia Suite, which was where La, La Petite was, and he heard the name La La. And there was only one person he ever knew, so let's carry on the story of that, just give you the context here. Born as the sole heir of the dukedom of Saint-Gault, within the region of Cheval, she was seen as one of the most important ponies in the land. She was a prize to be had, a being of true perfection to even rival Celestia's own divine grace. She had beauty unparalleled, intellect most envied, and riches lustfully coveted. Riches lustfully coveted. Yeah, I'm just gonna hang on that, as as per usual. There's like there's some implication I have. I'm trying to convey here. Uh, okay. Okay. Moment has passed. I've calmed down. Knowing her fate was to be the mother of the of the newest leader of all Cheval, the old Duke of Saint-Gault named her only as La Mère, which is French for mother. But it also sounds like Mère, which is a horse, a female horse. She hated that name, her birth act, her existence, her event, and her uh, an eventual destiny, believing for the longest time that all she lived for was, was a purpose she couldn't choose. And for that dark despair, that enticingly deep dark, uh, deep sadness where, where any other mare would find herself the happiest in the land, I loved her with all my heart. Okay. And for, and for that dark despair, that enticingly deep darkness with any, where, where any other mare would find happiness, I loved her with all my heart. Yeah, that did make sense. It's just a bit weird. It's just a weird sentence. Like yeah, because it does come off as weird, out of, completely out of context. Like, <coughs> like for that dark despair, I loved her with all of my heart. It just comes off as weird because um, it 
implies that Fancy Pants just liked her because she was she was under depression. He had some weird fetish for depressed depressed mares. But no, it's not about that. It's the fact that she wanted more, like some sort of Disney princess. And yeah. And that's within the theming of the actual story as well. It has the ideas of princes and princesses finding happily ever after, just like all the fairy tales. And all the ladies wanting more than what they already have, even though they're in very, very good living conditions, uh, despite a bit of domestic abuse. But let's not downplay domestic abuse, it can get pretty bad. Now, I first met her as a young cult who knew nothing about loving a mare. I thought nothing had worked for us, but in the shadows of my, but in the shadows, my strings were being pulled, coaxed to always coinc coincidentally bump, coaxed to always coincidentally bump into her. There you go, not bumping. What the heck? Okay, so I did make a few mistakes. Coincidentally bump into her and made to make small talk and share jokes that we pretended were funny for the sake of diplomacy than any real kindness. Kindness. Sincerity? I think sincerity, because that sincerity has a has a yeah, implication of kindness. Sincere for the fucking hell. <laughs> Sincerity. Ah, uh, uh, got on my head. Sincerely. Sincerity. Sincere. Yeah, that should be right. Any real sincerity. For the sake of diplomacy, then any real sincerity. Mm, still doesn't sound right. Bump into the this, uh, plus also, this is a really long sentence. I thought nothing of her at first, but in the shadows, my strings were being pulled. I was coaxed to always coincidentally bump into her, and we made yeah, and we made small talk. So this is a thing that happened, as the even as the uh, strings were being pulled. He wasn't coaxed to talk to her, but he did so. It was a natural thing to do. Okay. I was coaxed to always coincidentally bump into her, and we made. We made small talk, and, sh and shared jokes that we pretended were funny for the sake of diplomacy than any real sincerity. Uh, sincere I'm just trying to say cordiality sincere cordiality yeah because that doesn't sound right it's like real sincere and cordiality cordiality which means implies that they have a relationship a a friendly bond but they didn't have one at this point eventually all that talking got personal now they now they moved on even though I skipped the whole thing. I could have spent this whole chapter exploring how they got intimate, but that's not the point of this story. Eventually all that talking got personal. Our defenses came down and slowly we confided in each other. We shared all of our firsts and together we laughed and cried, almost as if we were meant to. And then one night it was decided that we had to part. I didn't understand until much later, but my father had been trying to have me seduce the heir of Sangol so that Catalog would have absolute control over yet another domain that annexed itself into the kingdom of Equestria. <laughs> I need to sort that, I think. Okay. I didn't understand until later. Full stop. That butt was a bit pointless. My father had been trying to have me seduce the heir of Sangalt. In doing so. In doing so. Uh, Cantalot 
would have the would have absolute control over yet another domain that annexed itself into the kingdom of Equestria. Cantalot, Camelot. And Equestria is Britain. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, because there is that big dis distinction. Cantalot government is different to Equestrian government. Let's just say. The royal court is different to the lord's court. Because these were fairly feudal times, I say. Feudal times with a bit of a with a slight industrial revolution, I say, because there there is a mass production of uh, of stuff. Because this is just a few years before the uh, season one. Like right now. Twilight should still be in school. And Fancy Pants... Well, in this present time, in this chapter, she would still be a toddler. While Fancy Pants would be a, a, an older teenager. Of legal age, probably. Of legal marrying age, more importantly. Le Maire would defy her father and choose me as her husband, and I... Yeah, God would choose me as her husband and I would rule the city of love that was, that was the thing that was the deal his father planned to have have him su seduce the heir but it, instead of it being a one-way thing they both consented to love each other but the Duke of Sangult didn't like that but my father was a fool, as I, as I might say. The powerful make the rules, and if they wished, remake them to suit the new situation. No amount of scheming would dethrone the Chevalier from their birthright, not even an agent of a goddess. However, the deed was done. Machinations of a conspirator. Machinations of a conspirator are no. I loved La Mer, and she loved me with all her heart. For the last night, as if it were the last of our lives, we made love like tomorrow would never come. We said no goodbyes in the morning, only exchanging in a single phrase instead, words that transcended everything we held dear and all that would force us to let go, in joy and in silence, la petite mort. Which is implying that all of Cheval speaks French, because it is, pa it is equestrian Paris. Hmm, I'm, I'm contemplating actually, because uh, in Dungeons and Dragons there there's a language called Common, which is basically everyone knows English, and as such, if you visit any foreign lands in Dungeons and Dragons, you can speak Common, and and generally everyone will understand you. But should I create a character that speaks purely in Chevalier? Purely in French, or as uh, Applejack would say, purely in fancy. Because, because uh, as as mentioned in the actual series, French does exist. Interesting thought. Woken up, and she was having a fort for no more. But yes, that's another chapter done. It's only seven hundred words. It's a nice, simple story of fancy pants. Meeting a mare that he loved, but he had to part from her because circumstances demanded it. It was young love, maybe even true love, but it was never meant to be. In joy and in sadness, a petite mort. That was the phrase that got me to think of this whole thing. This whole chapter, just these small phrase here, in joy and in sadness, la petite mort. There's joy, there's sadness in his life, but it was over. Just like the moment, just like the modern definition of la petite mort, which, were, which is apparently the uh, state of unconscious unconsciousness or the loss of life force as you orgasm. Enjoying and sadness, La Petite Mort.